the Format Window menu. The Format Window menu controls pretty much all of the visual aesthetics such as colors, text sizes, and layouts. It can be opened by right-clicking on a blank area of an existing chart window. If the Show Grid box is checked, a background grid will display. You can also set the grid type and color just below. If the Show Session Breaks box is checked, vertical lines will be displayed that represent an open or close in market activity. The vertical lines will plot at default time values based on the exchange, product, or your local time. The times plotted by the Session Break feature can be modified in the Settings tab of the Format Instrument menu and modified in greater detail in the Quote Manager, but we'll save that for another video. All the way at the bottom is a checkbox labeled Use as Default. As discussed in previous videos, you'll see this option quite often. This will save all the settings we defined above for every new chart we open from this point on. This can be very helpful in creating many charts that you want to look alike and will save you a lot of time. Moving over to the right, the Appearance tab will allow you to enable or disable certain visual chart features. Show Chart Subdividers. If checked, a regular line or a thicker 3D line will show that helps separate your main chart from subplotted indicators or subplotted charts. The title bar controls the blue bar at the top of the chart window framing. Choosing off can help save some screen space, but I prefer it on. The scroll bar controls the bottom scroll bar in a chart window. I prefer it off. Again, you can check Use as Default if you want every new chart created going forward to be consistent with the settings above. The next tab is labeled the Y Price Scale, and it controls the settings of the vertical price axis. The first setting lets you choose which size of the chart you want to display the y-axis price scale. You can choose either the right side, the left side, or both sides of the chart. I prefer both to be checked. You can also set the size of the column where the price axis values are displayed. Choosing automatic will adjust the column width to fit the amount of characters defined when formatting the instrument. Choosing manual will allow you to set the width of the column on your own. Moving on, the label color defines the font color of the plotted price scale values, the line color defines the line color of the y-axis, and the line style will define the type of line. You can also choose font type and size. Enabling the precise marker makes the plotted current price level easier to pinpoint on the price scale. Enabling the countdown feature displays a countdown timer below the price marker that shows how much time is left until the chart starts building a new bar or candle. The tab labeled Volume Profile will allow you to display a mini vertical graph that plots volume at certain price levels. Similar to the price scale, you can choose to display it on the right, left, or both sides. The status line tab controls the information that's displayed along the top of the chart, such as what you see here in the list. I prefer to have instrument, instrument link, resolution, resolution link, description, net change, and net percentage change checked off, which will display a status line as shown on my chart here. In addition to showing or hiding these pieces of information, you can arrange the order by using the move up and move down buttons. Please check in for a future video that goes into greater detail on what each of these checkboxes represents. If tracking mode is checked, it will display crosshairs on all charts of that contract as you actively move the crosshairs around on one chart. If multi-line mode is checked, it will display another line of information just below the main line if you happen to run out of space. When changing the color of the status line data, it is important to note that the color of normal represents status line data that can't be labeled as positive or negative. Positive values represent data values that have increased. Negative values represent data values that have decreased, and unchanged values represent the color of data values that have not changed. It is also important to note that the color of the first three pieces of information shown on my status line, which is the contract symbol, the resolution, and the contract description, are determined by the color of the candle wicks which can be modified in the Format Instrument menu. The last tab is labeled X Time Scale, and you can adjust the bar spacing, which defines the number of pixels between each bar or candle, 
and so reducing the number will essentially compress the bars tighter together and increase the number will decompress the bars further apart. You can also set the right margin which will define the size of the blank space to the right of the most recent bar or candle. This is useful when you want to extend for example a trend line past the most recent bar. It also makes it easier visually to see current price action instead of it being crammed up against the y-axis. If show empty periods is checked, it will display a gap between bars that represent the time the market was closed, for example, on a weekend. Show scale will completely enable or disable the x-axis time scale. You can adjust the x-axis time scale line, color, style, and label color, as well as font type and size. This concludes my general outline video of the format window menu in multi-charts. Thanks for watching.